Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from the Skill Builder channel and I want to talk to you about spray foam. Yeah, well, I've talked about it before, but a slightly different angle here. Is it a DIY job? We keep getting asked by people, should I be doing this myself or should I be hiring the pros? Well, should you be doing it anyway? That's a completely different video. For you people in the USA who don't know the problem, in the UK, if you spray foam your house, the mortgage company comes along, they look at it and they go, oh, do you know what? We don't lend money on spray foam properties so you're in the lurch. I know it doesn't happen in America, but it happens here because we don't just lend mortgages on any old shed or dog kennel. We got standards. So is it a DIY job? We all want to save money. Everybody loves to save a bit of money. I mean me, I'm a renowned skin flint. Ask Dylan. He knows that. I go fishing in skips. If I can find something secondhand or upcycle something, I'd much rather do it. But of course with spray foam, there are problems. Now you can get these kits, a couple of canisters, a hose, a gun, get a mask, put on a few bits of PPE and away you go spraying this lovely insulation all inside your loft space. Maybe you're doing a loft conversion or something like that. But there are problems. So let me just outline what the problems are and why you might not want to do it. Now, when you watch the videos of people spray foaming, you see these guys coming in dressed like spacemen and they just kind of spray it in and it seems to work, but it's a tricky substance. When you mix it, even the temperature and the humidity can alter the way that it mixes and the way it sets. So you go spraying it in there. You don't really know what you're doing before you know where you are. You've got spray foam in there, which has gone off. If you're lucky, it's gone off. It's become solid. But of course, then you find that you've got problems with things like off-gassing. Off-gassing is when you get a smell, when you get things like formaldehyde or whatever, and they're just leaching into your house. And if you're particularly prone to it, as I tend to be these days, very soon you've got respiratory problems. You're going to have to go outside for a breath of fresh air. And if the idea of insulating your home was to keep warm and you've got to spend half your life standing outside because you can't breathe, then you haven't really gained very much at all, have you? So I talked about just spraying it in, but of course you've got to make sure that you spray it in effectively. It's got to be even. It's got to fill all those gaps. And of course it does shrink back slightly. So even though you've sprayed it in, you've been diligent about filling all those voids, all those holes, you find when you look at it after a few hours, it's all shrunk back and you've got a gap around the edge. And maybe you're going to go around and just spray that in. Who knows? By the way, some professionals get that wrong as well. So don't think just by hiring a professional, you're out of the woods. Then let's Let's deal with the subject to health and safety. This stuff is nasty. You know, you don't want to get it on your skin. You don't want to get it in your eyes. And the guys who spray it all day long for a living, they don't just wear a mask. They wear a proper breathing apparatus, which is sucking in air from the back, putting it through a hose into their visor. So they're, they're pretty immune from it, if you like. But of course, uh, after they've gone, you're left no mask, no nothing, and you could still be breathing in these fumes. So you've got to mix it right, you've got to apply it right, and you've got to make sure you don't breathe it in or get it on your skin or anywhere else. You don't want to get it on your cat or your dog either. I've been around the building industry for a long time and I've seen many DIY jobs, many of them very, very good. But one thing DIYers do get wrong is they tend to be a little bit OTT, you know, because they haven't got the confidence, they tend to do things sort of belt and braces plus another belt. And if you do that with spray foam, you start putting it in and you think, oh, it's not expanding enough. And you put a bit more in before you know where you are, you can actually be moving the structure of your house. Yeah, you heard it here first. Spray foam can actually push walls apart. It can make doors difficult to close. Even when you get a simple can of DIY foam like this, if you go spraying it around a door or window, you can can find that as it sets and it pushes, it will push that frame out of line. So in something like a sash window, for example, you spray around the edge, you think, oh, I'll put a bit more in because you never know, do you? And then when you go to slide the sash window, you think it won't slide again. Now, you wouldn't imagine, would you, that this would move a door frame or a window frame, but it can. It can pop off all sorts of things. It can make plasterboard walls bulge. It can lift roof tiles all kinds of things and don't whatever you do spray this in any of your own orifices that could be deadly the next thing is 
heat. Now, I wouldn't say that spraying foam is going to cause a fire, but this stuff has its curing. It does warm up. So if you put a massive amount in and it starts warming up and you've got it around cables and things like that, then that heat can start to do damage to things like electricity cables. And that's the other thing. You should not really encapsulate any electricity cables of any sort in insulation because it needs to cool off especially if you're putting a large current through those cables, as we tend to do sometimes. Maybe we've got too many appliances on in the house and those cables are cooking and that can cause a fire. So are you using the right product for the right job? Because the guys that are selling it to you might not be giving you the best advice. You might go onto eBay or some other site and you might see spray foam cans, DIY kit, lovely, get some of those. And then you start spraying it in and then you realize it's completely the wrong product for your job because there there are many different types of spray foam. There's fire resistant spray foam, limited expansion spray foam, there's adhesive spray foam, and there's just the kind that fills gaps. But anyway, you need to get the right one for the job. And if you don't get the right one for the job, you've put it into your house and it's not doing the right job and it may be causing problems. Therefore, it's a very, very costly business to have it removed. Even if you do it yourself, it's uh, not pleasant. So you might think this is just a load of scaremongering and you might think, oh yeah, he's being paid by those foam installation companies. But actually, I've already got a video on our site which is saying that I don't even like the stuff. If you can avoid putting it in your house, I think that uh, you're better off using some other form of insulation such as PUR board or even better still rock wall, which is fireproof, rock proof. It's a wonderful product. Even the fibers have been suppressed so that you can put it in your house without having masses of fibers all over the place. The biggest advantage of it is that it, it seals all the gaps, all the drafts. So when you put it in, even though it may not have the same insulation value, it makes up for that by making an absolutely cozy, airtight blanket around your house. If indeed you want an airtight blanket around your house. And therein we have another video about air tightness in buildings and the mistakes that people are making there. So check those videos out and I'll be back with more advice. So if you've got a subject that you want us to tackle, get in touch and we'll do our best to oblige. After all, we're obliging people. Are we obliging people, Dylan? Only with subscribers.